kind of like Homer Simpson nuclear power plant. What's he doing? He's reading. Nerd. But I don't care, I like it. Hey, this is Reid from the LabEx. In this garden, we don't have electricity, which is okay for most of the time, but sometimes I need it to power my tools. It's also not a bad idea to have a cool box in the shed to keep things cool. So I decided to build a solar system using the free nuclear reactor, which is the sun. Now, designing a solar power system might seem intimidating, but once you know how to size your system, it's actually rather straightforward. After more than a month, finally, I got to finish working on my garden off-grid solar power system. Today, we're gonna learn how to size a garden solar power system in the most simplest way possible. We're gonna figure out what battery size we need at a given load and what solar panels are required to charge this battery in a given amount of time. So the first question is, what are the loads that I'm gonna use? I would be using a couple of LED lights and a small fan, which will take around 30 watts. One cooler, which is about 40 watts, and occasionally some electric tools, which will take around 500 watts. The next question is how long are these devices going to be used? Since I am in the garden mostly on the weekend, so my weekly consumption will be 6 hours for the LED and the fan, 16 hours for the cooler, and around 1 hour for the electric tools. So in total, my weekly energy needs is 1320 watt hour. You would need to increase this value by a factor of 3 or so to have a backup or days of autonomy in case of a bad weather. But in my case, since I'm gonna use the power only on the weekends, there will be no load on the battery for the rest of the week where it can be charged. However, the 1320 watt hour is only the usable part. For lead acid batteries, typically the recommendation is 50% depth of discharge. That means you can only use half of the battery's rated capacity. I will be using sealed lead acid batteries since they are affordable and good enough for such application. So I'm gonna have to double the size of the batteries. So two 12 volt, 120 amp hour would give us 2880 watt hour, which is slightly more than what we need, which is even better. Now that we know the size of the batteries, we can size the solar area that can fully charge those batteries. Depending where you live, you can find the average of sun time per day. In my location, the average is about four hours a day. Since I'm using the system only on the weekends, I can let the batteries get charged during the five days of the week. This gives us 20 hours in total. So we need to divide the batteries by the total amount of sun hours. And that will give us a solar array of 144 watt in size. Putting in consideration all the energy losses in the wires and the other inefficiency factors, you would need to round up to 200 watt. And solar panels are not as expensive as they used to be 10 years ago anyway. We figured out the size of the battery, the size of the solar panels. Now we need to figure out what size solar charge controller needs to be to be able to charge our batteries with the 200 watt solar panels. All we need to do is divide our 200 watt solar panels by 24 volt, which will give us around 8.4 amp. Typically, you need to oversize the controller by 25 to 30 percent to overcome efficiency issues. So a 10 amp rated solar charge controller would be enough for this setup. By the way, you can save costs by increasing the voltage of your system. This will reduce the current. Low current rated solar charge controllers are cheaper and high current need thicker copper wires, which are expensive. So I decided to use two 100 watt solar panels connected in series along with two 12 volt batteries also connected in series which will give me a 24 volt system last but not least the inverter whose job is to convert the 24 volt to 240 volt it should be also able to handle high surge current so typically you double or even triple the total amount of load so a 1000 watt rated inverter with 2000 watt peak power will get the job done Whew. okay now the next step is to put everything together here is the build montage enjoy the ride
to the fat lady sings. I owe you a trip, cause me and you, we got a thing. My sunshine stays, hair curly like a string. Just a big ol' ooh, smile, that's about all you gotta bring. So enjoy the ride, that's some pillows in the Chevy. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh, darling, Lord, in the so here's the final product. The reason why I use this old school analog gauges instead of digital gauges is because of the simplicity. I mean, this thing uses only a DC motor and a spring. That's all. Most importantly, they are reliable. All right, so what do we have here? We have here the voltage across the batteries. Right now, it's slightly above 14 volts, so it's basically fully charged. This is the output of the solar panels. So here, the voltage across the panels for around 40 volt, and the current is around 2 amp. And from the solar panel, it goes to the charger, charge controller. From the charge controller, it goes down to the batteries and to the inverter. So here, this is the current and the voltage across the batteries. This is the current that goes to the inverter and from the inverter goes down to the loads and this is the watt meter for the load here the fuse number one which is the dc breaker for the solar panels and we have two fuses uh, from the output of the inverter fuse number two this is the fi fuse and the wire protection fuse So if this is what it takes to power a small garden, what would it take to power the entire world? Well, if we cover this surface area in the Sahara Desert with solar panels, that would be enough to power the entire planet. Although the panels will be covered with sand the next morning, but you get the point. Thanks for watching.